Okay. Okay. Uh, for buyers considering a short sale, is the buyer willing to wait? Approval can take four weeks to six months or longer. The average is 90 days. If it's a file that we're, wor that we're working on, we will give you the expectation as to how long we think it's going to take based on the situation and who the mortgage company is. If it's an FHA loan, you're really talking minimum four months in most cases. The, the red tape is huge. Um, some, of these got, some of these timelines were getting down to as little as like four to six weeks before CFPB got involved last year and made them be reviewed for loan mods first. And then that added like another month. Um, so like bare minimum like 60 days these days um, for like a Fannie Mae short sale, you can get done potentially in 60 days, depending on who the servicer is. What's that? I guess I added it. <laughs> <laughs> I was tweaking this. <laughs> I guess that one didn't get in. A, sorry, that didn't get in the uh, handout. Um, we'll have to, if, if you guys are really interested, email us and Sean can send a copy of this page to you. It's we being can record it too, although I don't know what I'm going to do with the recording yet. <laughs> so, well, yeah, we could get um, this information to you. So, the, is the buyer, you know, realistic on how long it's going to take? Or can they realistically wait that long? If they need to be in by Thanksgiving, they should not be putting an offer in on a short sale today. Um, short sales are as is. The bank will not make repairs. And typically, well, not typically, they won't give the buyer repair credits either. They don't own the home. It's not their house. They're not making repairs. They're not um, giving the buyer repair credits, allowing repair credits in a short sale. So there's always an as is rider that's needed with the short sale. There's a couple banks that don't ask for it, but we ask for it on every file because literally 90% of the banks require it now. And as is is barely worth the paper it's written on. Because it doesn't remove the buyer's inspection contingency. It's just a disclosure that the buyer's not going to be, or the seller's not going to be able to make any repairs on the property. So offer recording. That's really all the disclosure is. The buyer still has the ability to do an inspection. If they find problems with the inspection, they can back out. Because they can back out, they can still try to negotiate. So as is doesn't do a whole lot, but the banks want it in there. Um, will the property pass for the mortgage type that the buyer's getting? You know, if the house, the roof's leaking and they're getting an FHA loan, the bank's not going to fix the roof. The seller probably don't have the money to fix the roof. So that's probably not the right house for that buyer. And we've had like agents not really understand that, and their buyer puts an offer in on it. We may not have been told that there's that particular problem with the house. We get short sale approval, and then the deal blows up on their inspection. Like, you could see it was leaking from the beginning. Why didn't we all just waste our time with it? Can this? you just, um, we can do, they can do 203K loans on a short sale? Yeah, you can do a 203K on a short sale. However, 203K takes too long with the amount of time we can get on a short sale approval. If the buyer moves forward and does the paperwork for their contractors, you know, what they need for their, their loan originator, and they get that piece done or mostly done by the time we have short sale approval, they can still close within the 60 day time frame that we should be able to get for short sale approval. You know, 30 day approval and probably a 30 day extension. But if they haven't done anything for the 203K piece of it, they are not going to close in 60 days. Right? That's what we tell people 60 days. And they better have the right team involved. And that's part of yeah, it's like minimum 60 days. Yeah. 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 So they need to be willing to move forward and get the contractors in there. Like this time of year, contractors are busy. Getting them to do paperwork is hard. <laughs> you know, so the amount of time that that takes, if they can work on that while we're getting short sale approval, there's a chance that that can get done. And we see it happen, you know, quite a bit. But they have to be willing to do that. Otherwise, it's just not going to be making it to the closing table. Mm -hmm. Then the deal probably blows up. Because it is as is. Well, but, but the, ba the bank would not be responsible? No. Nope. The, the bank's no. not responsible for anything. They only have a lien on the property. They don't own it. The seller still owns it. And in most cases in this scenario, the seller has no money. Oh, this is not a short sale. Not an REO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a bank-owned property. Well, on a bank-owned property, they own it. They may have to address the ground oil tax. Oh, the on a, on the fork, yeah. Because now the bank is the seller; yeah. they're the owner. It's their problem. They own that piece of junk. You know what I mean? So they may be more willing to do something, but they're the ones that's they're the one that is selling it. They own the property. On the short sale side of things, the seller is still the owner, yeah. but we have to get mortgage approval because the bank's getting less than what they're owed. But right now, the only thing the bank has is a lien on the property that we're trying to negotiate with them to release for less than the amount that's owed. So because they're not the owner, they're not willing to pay to do anything other than secure the house. They won't even pay to unsecure the house in most cases. Um, if, if the property has sold now, 
Mm -hmm. Oh, nightmare. Nightmare. If they're owned, the, the question was if problem. the property has solar panels. Yeah. If they're leased, which most of the ones you see are like Solar City, they're not leased. It's a solar purchase agreement. So the solar company owns the panels, and there's a UCC filing, Uniform Commercial Code filing on the land records that says these fixtures that are on the home are not part of the real estate. They are separately owned by this company. Even if the bank forecloses, the solar company still owns the panels. The agreements that the homeowner sign are 20 year agreements to buy their electricity from the solar company that's gonna generate that electricity with the solar panels. And there's an agreement in there about how much the solar panels are gonna to generate to offset their bill to the electric company. So they have a fixed you know, bill that goes you know, it's like, it's like an alternative electric supplier, basically, you know, what it is. Only they're supplying it by putting panels on your house. But you're signing an agreement with them for 20 years. You go to sell the house, you have three choices to get out of that agreement. Pre-purchase the remaining portion of the agreement. There's, a, there's usually a, a schedule in the thing that they sign that goes through all 20 years. If you buy it this year, this is how much you're going to pay to buy it out. It's a, dis, it's a discount. It can. Um, the homeowner's not going to have the money in a short sale to buy, pre-buy it out. Their other option is to pay the solar company a fee, it's like it's only a couple thousand dollars, to come take the panels down and bring it someplace else. The homeowner's probably not having another home to move to, they're gonna be renting. Now it could go to somebody else who was gonna assume the agreement, I haven't seen that happen yet. But they could, somebody else could assume the agreement, have it brought to their house, I haven't seen that. The other option is the buyer assumes the agreement, which in a short sale is the only way I've seen it happen. The buyer has to be willing to assume the solar purchase, the remaining amount of the solar purchase agreement. Now, most of the ones I've seen, if the homeowner's got the paperwork, they can show that they've been paying less between the electric bill and the payment to the solar company than they were paying in electricity. And it's green and blah, blah, blah. But because it's a 20-year agreement, that scares a lot of people. Well, the buyer's lender needs to know that this is happening. It would, it's got to be part of the, pur the purchase contract that the buyer is assuming that. We need it from the bank's perspective. Um, and from the buyer's loan perspective, they need to know that too. Because unlike your regular electric bill, now the payment to the solar company becomes part of their debt-to-income calculations. Even though they have an infinite agreement to buy electricity from the electric company, because they have this special agreement to buy from the solar company, it gets added to their overall debt-to-income ratio. So it could screw up the qualification. They'll actually qualify for a lower loan amount on that house because of that number being included in their figures. Um, but it is possible to do. The hardest part is actually getting a buyer because they need, not only do they have to wait for a short sale approval, now they have to assume it with the solar panels. The couple that I've had that actually closed, the buyer was ecstatic. They really liked the fact <laughs> that they was you know, coming with solar. Um, but there are other people that are like, I'm scared on that 20 year agreement. I can see based on this situation that if I have a problem, I have a problem getting out of that agreement. You know what I mean? Good question. Uh, inspections now or after short sale approval. I have a slide on this, so we'll get to that one. Uh, septic, who's gonna pay for the pump? Custom is that the seller pays for it. What if the seller doesn't have any money? So this is, this is you know, on the buyer's side. I should have had this on the listing side also. Something to discuss with the seller. Are you going to be able to pay to have the septic pump? That's normally your responsibility. If not, you want to let the buyer know that that scenario so that's part of the terms of the contract because that's opposite of what the norm is. You're not expecting for the buyer to have to pay for that. But if the seller has literally no money, they're unemployed and have no, they don't have the money to do it. If somebody's gonna have to do it, if the buyer's not willing, then the deal's gonna fall apart. So the sooner you have that discussion, the better off. Um, does the buyer need any closing cost credits? It's common, especially in our market, for closing cost credits to be included in the sales price. The maximum ever allowed on a short sale is 3% of the sales price. I know on the lending side, the buyer can get up to 6% on an FHA loan. On the short sale side, the lenders will not approve a credit to the buyer of over 3%. Think about it from their perspective. You as the buyer are acknowledging that it's worth this much and you want us to lose 3% more giving you a credit for you to be able to buy it. If the buyer is doing a low down payment loan like 5% or less, there's a pretty good chance the bank would agree to the closing cost credit. If they are doing a higher loan, the value loan, putting down more than 5%, the chances go down that they will approve that. The bank's perspective is gonna be put less down and pay your own damn closing costs. Um, we don't wanna lose more money. If it's a reverse mortgage, closing cost credits are not allowed at all, period. So if the short sales on a reverse mortgage, they will not approve a closing cost credit to the buyer. Um, uh, FHA, because you may, if you're working on your own short sale, you may hear this from the bank, FHA rules say that the maximum closing cost credit they can approve is 1% of 
of the buyer's loan amount and only if the buyer is getting an FHA loan. The lender, the servicer, could approve that. Anything more than that, they need to submit a variance request to HUD. HUD will still approve only, up to 3%. Still only 3%. Still only 3% and still has to meet the minimum net. So typically, you know, your offer is going to need to be higher in order to cover the credit, in order to hit the net. Again, this is all figures that Sean will figure out. Yeah. <laughs> um, who's negotiating the short sale? So this is on the buyer's side. Something you want to ask. Hey, who's doing the short sale negotiation? Are you the agent doing it? Is it an attorney who's doing it? Is it me who's doing it? Is the seller trying to do it themselves? You know, when you're advising your buyer as to whether they want to get involved in this transaction, that's probably something you want to know. Um, and if you're asking, if you find out, like I'm not doing it, or even if I am, whoever's doing it, the more you ask them, the more you can determine whether it seems like they know what they're doing. So, like, oh, how many mortgages are there? Who, who owns the loan? Is it Fannie Mae, is it Freddie Mac, is it FHA? They're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go look at another house. Or recommend they give me a call. Uh, oh. so I, I, I've negotiated a contract where I've said, we will buy this house if they use Sean Wilder for the short sale. Yeah. And we put that in the contract. And, and I've had listing agents like that too, when on the buyer side. They're like, if you're not using Sean, my buyer's not no. an offer. Yeah, that's in the MLS that says, please call Sean for yeah, well, that's one of the things we recommend, and it's in the packet that we send to agents, is in the agent-to-agent -agent remarks, you can put, you know, for short sale questions, call Sean Wilder and have my phone number, so that you as the listing agent aren't fielding questions from the buyer's agent that you may not know or understand or try to get the answer from me and then convey. We can give them the answer to their questions if it's not personal financial information for the homeowner. But, hey, how long do you think it's going to take? How many mortgages do you have to deal with? How many mortgages there are is public record that can look it up in the land records? Um, you know, is it already in foreclosure? Again, you can look it up on the judicial court site. So that's not personal financial information that you can't share. Um, so we can say, yeah, you know, it's in foreclosure. There's no foreclosure date. There's plenty of time. There's two mortgages. I deal with both of these mortgage companies all the time. We think it's going to take probably about 90 days from the time to get an offer. You know, is your buyer looking at putting in an offer? Any particular terms you want to run by me that you, you know, like closing cost credits or something like that. Um, when they talk to me, they're like, oh, these guys know what they're doing. If they didn't already know who I was. So they get, you know, all warm and fuzzy that, Somebody who knows what they're doing is working on it. And they're not as worried that this, what kind of disaster year process are we getting involved with? Because they've all had horror stories that they've heard or maybe experienced in the past. And a lot of the stuff we're talking about has gotten worse over the last couple of years. FHA guidelines have gotten worse. The fact that the banks have to review for uh, loan mods first has gotten worse. The banks have gotten smaller staff sizes so their people are more overworked and don't understand the guidelines that they're supposed to be following. There's more dysfunction on the other end that we have to deal with, so it's a lot more challenging. If you don't have a lot of experience going and doing this, good luck. <laughs> um, let's see. It's it, property is the property vacant or winterized? We talked about that a little already. Um, if the utilities are off, who's going to turn the utilities back on for inspections? S along the same lines as the septic pumping. If it's vacant and the utilities are off, is the homeowner going to have the money to have it turned back on? So questions that you want to ask. You know, if you're on the buyer side, ask the, the listing side, hey, I, you know, it's winterized. Is the seller going to be able to turn these back on? If not, you know, it's got to be negotiated into the contract that the buyer is going to turn that back on. Um, otherwise, it's not going to get turned back on. Does it, does it make sense to waste three months waiting for short sale approval and then you can't do inspections and they yes. can't get an appraisal done? Yes. Um, is the agent. buyer's agent related to the buyer? If the buyer's agent is directly related, like financially, husband and wife, they are never going to pay commission on the buyer's side. Because they, they view it the same as paying the buyer a commission, and they will not pay a buyer a commission. So the buyer can't be their own agent, and their husband and wife can't be their own agent. That's 100% of the time. If the buyer's agent's at all related to the set, to buyer, it's possible the bank still won't agree to pay commission on a short sale. It, it varies widely. We really never know, because we don't see it that often, um, whether the bank will agree to pay commission. So they may go through the whole process and realize, now if you have the same last name, they're going to notice. If you don't have the same last name, they're probably not going to notice. Um, but definitely if it's like, you know, it's my cousin and they have the same name, it's going to come up. We had one where it was a broker and it was like a cousin scenario and the bank still absolutely refused to pay any buyer side commission. So it's, it's something to be aware of. Is the, uh, so, it's, so since it's sold as is, the home inspection is for the buyer's purpose only? Yeah, but they still have their ability to back out if they find something wrong. And since they still have the ability to back out, that means they have the ability to try to renegotiate. Hey, I'm backing out if we can't come to a new term. So the ad, like I said, as this is barely worth the paper it's written on, 
because it doesn't really take anything away from the buyer's ability to try to negotiate. It puts them on notice that nothing's going to get fixed. You know, and the bank's reason for wanting it is they want the buyer to offer what they're actually willing to pay given the facts that they know of the property. On, you know, versus, hey, I'm just going to offer them list price to get it under contract, we'll renegotiate after inspection. It doesn't work on a short sale. 